the Hello, my name is Yasmin and welcome to this video cassette tutorial. Today we are going to be covering how to transfer DVDs onto VHS tapes. I understand your desire to watch your favorite content in hi-fi stereo. VHS is the greatest and most convenient format out there. You know that and I know it too. I went through several different videos and forums in order to figure out how to do this myself, so I think it's going to be useful for everyone to compile all of the information that I've found and put it into this single instructional video tape. I will be linking all of my sources in the description box down below if you'd like to dive into some of these steps into more depth. These other videos may also cover important use cases such as using the proper VHS slash DVD players and also working with Mac or PC. In this video, we will be talking about Mac only. Here are the six steps you need to follow in order to convert your DVDs into VHS. Step number one, obtaining a non-copy protected DVD. Remember, we are not encouraging bootlegging in this video. Step number two, obtain your content. Step number three, how to properly burn DVDs on MacBooks in 2023. Step four, selecting a VCR and DVD player. Step five, proper cable hookups. And step six, tips and troubleshooting. Here is the equipment that you will need to complete this task. Note that I set out to complete this task in the cheapest and most effective way possible. There may be a fancier way to do this, but I went with the absolute cheapest option. Equipment that you will need includes a DVD player, a VCR player, one AV cable, blank recordable VHS tapes, more on this later, recordable slash burnable DVDs, the format that I prefer to use is the DVD-R format, a computer with an optical drive or in my case an external optical drive, this brand is Asus. Optional is this VHS converter cable, specifically because it has an S-video component. You could also purchase a USB to S-video component, but this is very, very cheap on Amazon. It's under $10. You will also need some software, all of which is free and open source. Alrighty, now that you've gotten all of your materials together, let's go through the six steps in detail. Step number one, obtaining non-copy protected DVDs. Why am I encouraging non-copy protected DVDs? Well, besides being accused of endorsing bootlegging, there's one other very important reason. Copy protected DVDs would be something like this Napoleon Dynamite copy from Kmart. This DVD is equipped with special sensors within the disc that prevent your DVD player from allowing copies to be made, not just on other DVD players, but also computers and VCRs. So if you do attempt to record on a copy protected DVD, one of two things can happen. Number one, you get nothing and none of it works, or number two, you get something but it's fuzzy, muffled, and there may be lines going through the video that you've recorded. So overall, it's just not worth it. Stay away from these, they're not going to help you. Now, I obtained this giant stack of blank CDs and DVD-Rs at my local thrift store for under $5. However, if you don't have access to a thrift store or there's nothing good at your thrift store, you can also go on Amazon and purchase these in bulk. Like I mentioned, I recommend staying with the DVD-R format because most DVD players tend to accept it. However, if you are using an older DVD player, you may run into issues, and this is where I recommend checking out supplemental videos to help you kind of narrow down what DVD format you need to find. But for all intents and purposes today, we're using the Memorex Cool Colors, because we're cool on this channel and love color, to record our DVD. Step two, obtaining your content. In this instructional videotape, 
I will be using my own content because I'm proud of it and it's amazing. No matter how you choose to obtain your content, you will need to have it on your computer. Typically, video content is going to be in the MP4 format. However, when burning onto DVD, you want your content to be in MPEG format. The open source platform that I'll be sharing with you does this conversion automatically. However, if you choose not to use this program, you will need to convert your MP4 videos into MPEGs before proceeding with the burning process. Step three, how to properly burn DVDs on your Mac in 2023. Macs haven't had optical drives in over a decade, so there's a very good chance that you don't have one either. I highly recommend this Asus optical drive that I purchased. I found that it's been very, very easy, no fuss to use, and more importantly, I'm able to successfully use this USB to USB-C converter without having any issues of my Mac actually identifying it on the computer. This also introduces us to the first piece of software that I recommend you download, and that is called Burn. Burn is an incredibly basic DVD burning software that is going to take care of the more complicated portions that your Mac simply can't handle. Here we have our external optical disk drive. I'm going to use this USB to USB-C converter to plug in right here, and then I will plug into the disk drive, effectively powering it on. I also have the burn software open on this right side here. I'm going to take my test video, which is an AVI recording of me dancing to music. It's some B-roll footage. I'm going to put this clip into the video section here. You want to make sure that it's under the video section and not under data, audio, or copy. Now when we do this, the program is going to notify me that the file is incompatible. It would not just do this with AVI, it would also do this with an MP4 file. So what we're going to do is hit convert. That is going to convert this into an MPEG format. It's also going to ask where I'd like to save it. For me, I'm going to save it on my downloads drive. All right, and now we have our file. We are almost ready to burn the disc. I'm going to select burn in this lower right-hand corner. It's also going to ask you to insert the disc, so we're gonna do that. Now that the disc is inserted, you're going to see an automatic pop-up from Mac. This is where I made my first mistake. I originally thought that if I opened the blank DVD into the Mac driver and just burnt it straight from Mac that it would be fine. However, it only burns it in a way that Mac can read and not any other DVD player. So when you see this Mac pop up, you're going to hit ignore. Now that our disc is in, we can also select the right speed. You have two options, 4X or 8X. I always recommend doing 4X. It takes a little bit more time. However, you're going to get a higher quality burn and there's going to be less likely that there'll be actual errors or skips on the disc. You're then going to select burn. I'm not going to do that for this demonstration because I don't actually want to burn this on the disc, but the end result will be very simple. It will automatically open a QuickTime video window that will be replaying your disc back. Now, I always recommend before recording on VHS to check and make sure that the disc actually plays on the DVD player. If not, you may have to go back and troubleshoot. It really depends on a lot of different factors so this is the way that works for me you may have to finick with it a little bit though just to make sure that it works for your specific needs step four selecting a vcr and dvd player the reason why i include this section is that not all vcrs and dvd players are created equal when it comes to recording let's start with vcrs first you'll want to make sure that your vcr supports recording in the first place i will let you know something like this which is a jvc dvd player from 1999 is not going to be a good option. For whatever reason, this DVD player does not play recorded DVDs at all. However, this Magnavox DV220MW9 is a model that I do recommend for the DVD player specifically because this model has a record function. Something else that you're also going to want to look out for in your DVD player is the kind of inputs and outputs that are available on the player. This one not only has an AV in, but an AV out. For this example of recording, we are going to take our AV cable and we are going to connect it to the DVD VCR audio out. You will match the colors to the input. Very straightforward, very simple. I also prefer a DVD player that has an S video component for monitoring. I will kind of tell you guys a bit more about that later, but I already have my S video 
inserted here. So this is all you need to do on your DVD player. Now you may be asking yourself, Yasmin, okay, you mentioned a VCR. This is not just a DVD player, this is also a VCR player. And although you are correct, I'm sad to inform you that this particular Magnavox combo explicitly states that it does not allow DVD to VHS recording, which is very, very irritating, and I would keep that in mind if you're actually shopping around for something to, to do this process with. I would keep that in mind because I have tried this several different times to record from here to here. No matter what I do, I cannot get it to work, so I don't recommend that. We don't have to fear, though, because I also have this wonderful Panasonic VCR here, which is even better because this actually has hi-fi stereo. This one here does not have hi-fi stereo. So we are going to be using this. As you see, it has the record capabilities right here. It also has audio in and audio out jacks. So this is how everything is going to be set up. This same AV cord that you plugged here for audio out, you're going to plug the opposite end into the audio in section here. So the section that does not display the VCR on your TV. Same scenario as last time, you're going to match up each of the colors. This is what the back of your recording setup should look like. Congratulations, you are almost ready to record your DVDs onto your VHS tapes. However, there's one extra bonus step that I'd like to include. You don't have to do this, but I like to do it so I can keep track of when my recording has ended. And that is using this open source platform called OBS. It is typically used for streamers, but you can also use it to display what is on the DVD player onto your computer. All you need is a USB to S video hookup, which I have here. I'm going to power on my DVD player, and I already have the video capture device set here. However, if you were new to the platform and needed to add it, what you would do is click the plus sign, and then you would do video capture device, and it should power on that way so you can actually see what's going on. Step six, tips and troubleshooting. Here is what the monitoring looks like and is also a great way to segue into a little bit of tips and troubleshooting. I was just having an issue getting this picture to display and I realized that I needed to plug my USB-C into the second cable instead of the first. I don't know why, but if you're ever having a tough time doing stuff like this, fixing little teeny details like that can sometimes be the thing that makes it possible for you to get your job done. So this is the monitoring system, and now we are ready to do this. Remember when I said you needed blank VHS tapes in order to record? That can be pretty difficult because VHS tapes are no longer being manufactured, and finding good recordable tapes can be very difficult. However, if you do see TDK tapes, I highly recommend them. This is a TDK tape, and it has recorded beautifully. What you may want to do is take yourself down to the thrift store. I like going to the Goodwill where the VHS tapes are 49 cents a pop and finding new inbox tapes or just newer tapes in general. This is The Englishman who went up a hill but came down a mountain. I've never heard of this movie. I don't know anything about this movie, but it was new in the box and that is what inspired me to choose it for my recordable medium. Now, VHS tapes are equipped with something to prevent you from recording over them. This is for several different reasons, copyright and also making sure that someone doesn't accidentally record over content. And that is this tiny little flapper roo right here. So all you're going to need to do is get a piece of sticky tape, cover this up, and you should be able to record over these tapes. Sometimes this can be a little bit finicky. It depends on the tape. It depends on the VCR. It's kind of like Russian roulette, but with old analog media. So you do have to troubleshoot and be careful sometimes, but really putting the tape over it should do the trick, and then you can record over this tape. I am not actually going to be doing any recording because I am not ready to record over this yet. I wanna see what the previews look like, and I already have content on this TDK tape here that I do not want to record over. However, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what the process would look like so you don't have to worry or be confused. So the first thing that we're going to do is take our tape I'm gonna grab Apollo 13 just as an example tape and you're going to insert it into the VCR. You're going to want to make sure that the tape is completely rewound from the beginning unless you want your recorded medium to start somewhere in the middle of the tape. So just kind of have it on standby. 
The next thing that you're going to do is insert your recorded disc. Okay, you're going to insert the recorded disc. Now, the nice thing about the burn software is that it automatically generates a menu for you. So your disc isn't just automatically going right into your recorded medium. So you'll put your disc in, the disc will boot up. It should show on the little monitor that I have here and then the display screen will, will be prompted on there. Now, what you're going to do then is go back to your VHS player and you're going to press record and then you can press play on your DVD and the DVD should capture the content. You might wanna stop a couple seconds in and rewind your tape just to make sure that it's being recorded properly and everything is looking good. And if it is, then you are good to go and that is it. That is all you have to do. You can just record. You can record and record until the cows come home. Some extra tips and troubleshooting. If you're having difficulty recording on your VCR and you're absolutely positive that your VCR supports recordings, there are a couple different things you can do. One, you can seek out the original remote for your unit. A lot of units do not come with remotes, but oftentimes there's additional recording settings that you can access by purchasing your remote. You can also open up your VCR and check your mode switch. The mode switch is usually located at the very bottom and it's responsive for detecting certain components of the VCR and it can definitely impact your ability to record. If you do want to do this, I recommend 12 volt videos. He is a fabulous resource and a very, very experienced person when it comes to taking apart v VCR players. VCR players. VCRs. I've made my fair share of errors though doing this myself as an amateur, so just be very cautious because sometimes you can end up doing more harm than good. You may also need to clean your VCR heads if you want more information on how to do that. I recommend watching one of my videos. This VCR is year 2000 compliance. I have a section in that video where I go over how to clean the head. Finally, continue to experiment and seek out other creators. Lots of people do different types of videos for these sorts of more difficult niche tasks. And I'm sure if you keep searching, you will eventually find your answers. And that is it. That is the end of this instructional videotape, how to record DVDs onto your VHS cassettes. I hope this video was helpful and entertaining for you. If you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Yasmin Collects. We do all sorts of fun, nostalgic, random things on here, and I would love to have you join. And if you have any thoughts, comments, concerns, feedback, questions, stories, nostalgia, anything, all of the above, please leave them in the comments down below, and I will see you guys in my next VHS cassette tutorial tape. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Here are your six steps. Step number one, obtaining, obtain, yeah, come on. More passion, more passion, more passion, more passion, more passion. <laughs> let's go, let's go. More passion, more drama, more passion, more drama. Okay, all right. <clears throat>